Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to Royal Sussex Live. Welcome one and all. <clears throat> and uh, by the way, uh, JM, thank you so much for the PayPal. I just got that a little while ago. Didn't mean to do that. Okay, back here again. Uh, let me see. Who was here first, or should I say, who was here 20 minutes ago? Joyce Wells, thank you so much for being first. Susie Q, thank you for being number two. And also, the first one for tonight that I noticed has a membership. Thank you very much for that. Okay, so I'm going to just go ahead and skip all the way to the last and greet everyone as we go along. Thank you so much. Thanks for being here. Very kind of you. And all right, so we're good with that. Let's get on with it, shall we? Um, Heart of Invictus is here, is here. Heart of Invictus is here. Our hearts are here. I was just asking about that yesterday, day before yesterday. I can't remember. And I'm like, well, technically summer is not over yet. Um, and of course, it was not over and it's still summer, even though it seemed like fall has come so early, especially with the weather that we've had the past few days where it would not stop raining and the temperature got very cool and fall-like. But alas, it is still summer, so no worries. Anyway, um, there we go. Archwell Production was created by the Duke and Duchess of Sussex to produce programming and, uh, I'm sorry, that informs, elevates, and inspires through its creative partnership with Netflix, the world's leading streaming entertainment service with more than 221 million members. 221. That's about the population of Brazil. Archwell's production uh, utilizes the power of storytelling to embrace our shared humanity and duty to truth through a compassionate lens. I couldn't have said it better. Okay, so with that, oh, there's more. Heart of Invictus Archwell production in partnership with the Invictus Games Foundation introduces Heart of Invictus from the Oscar-winning team of director Orlando Von Izodel and producer Joanna Nada Segari, Segara, uh, the White Helmets Barunga Evelyn. Okay. The stories follows a group of extraordinary competitors from around the world all service members who have experienced life-changing injuries or illness on their road to the Invictus Games, The Hague. And uh, it says the multi-episode series joins the competitors as they train along the way, reveals powerful stories of resilience and hope. The series also follows the organizers as they work to prepare for the games alongside each nation's team, supporting the competitors as well as their friends and families. I am looking forward to this. So, and of course, there was a word from the Duke of Sussex, the founder, uh, the creator of the Invictus Games, 
Our Invictus Games community represents some of the bravest and most dedicated individuals from 23 nations across the globe. Heart of Invictus is the incredible story of competitors brought together through service who are now united through sport while in various stages of recovery from both visible and invisible injuries. These competitors and their loved ones give a compelling look at their journey to the Invictus Games in a way that commands admiration and respect. The Duke of Sussex, patron of the Invictus Games Foundation. Oh boy, this is exciting. And um, <laughs> well, some of the hatoids, some of the hatoids don't seem to have much to say about it. Oh, Carol. Thank you so much for the super sticker. And thank you so much for watching Royal Sussex, who is here to tell you all about the Invictus Games. So uh, full disclosures, I am not going to share that because, well, um, it involves Netflix. And, you know, they have a heavy copyright. I mean, their copyright is like um, it's like putting an elephant on top of you. You just can't move. So um, I cannot show it to you, but we can still talk about it. Has everybody seen it? Heart of Invictus. There you go. Uh, so August 30th, it will premiere the 30th of August, 2023. So set your calendars. Uh, let me see. What day is that? I'm going to take a look. No worries. Okay. The 30th is a Wednesday. Okay, yes, the 30th is a Wednesday. So not only is it the start of Heart of Invictus, but it is also Prince Spaghetti Day. So that's when I put on a house dress and I tie a rag on my head, a little bandana, and I yell out the window, Anthony, Anthony. And then some voice from nowhere says, Anthony is running home because he knows it's Wednesday. And Wednesday is Prince Spaghetti Day. <laughs> but you know what was weird about that commercial? Why are you yelling, Anthony? Shouldn't it be Antonio? Antonio? Not Anthony. And plus, if you open up a window in the very Italian neighborhood of Boston and yell, Anthony, wouldn't like a thousand kids come running? Or Antonio, wouldn't a thousand kids come running? Boy, I tell you, how long is it? Nine minutes, 12 seconds, and already I'm referencing a commercial from the 70s. <sighs> Sorry, guys. I can't help myself. Cinzia, thank you so much for the super sticker. And thank you, as always, for watching Royal Sussex, home of Anthony, Antonio, old commercials where we discuss old commercials and a couple of things about the Duke and Duchess of Sussex. Diana Hawkins says, The Heart of Invictus promo is fantastic. August 30th. We'll be there no matter who claims not. Uh, I will be there. You will be there. And Deranger Clown College will come too. Oh, they have to. They have to. It, they, they wouldn't. As a matter of fact, just imagine how many of them are watching right now. How many of them are watching right now? They love the Sussex Friendly channels. They just can't admit it to themselves. And here is the first, this was the first, um, I guess you can call it a poster that they had for the Invictus game, Heart of Invictus. Well, uh, they said summer 2023 and you know, and the clock was ticking away and I started getting a bit nervous. I'm like, well, what's going on? I mean, I didn't doubt that it was coming, but you see, this is the new one. This one actually gives you a date. But the old one was just a promo to say um, summer 2023. So it is here at last. I am in such a good mood. What could possibly go wrong? Heart of Invictus, uh, Prince Harry's veteran sports docuseries is coming to Netflix August 2023. Prince Harry's sports docuseries. Um, Heart of Invictus is coming to Netflix 
Yeah, says it again. And then it says at the bottom, Prince Harry's long-awaited sports documentary centered around disabled military veterans. Heart of Invictus is coming to Netflix again, again, August 2023. Um, the five-part series. Oh, it's five parts. Five parts, you guys. Will follow injured military veterans from around the world who, after their service, have turned to competitive sports. Love it. Love it. Love it. Love it. Hey, Lydia, Venus, Joseph Berno, uh, Gwen uh, Marie, and Sharon Jones. Gwendolyn Daniels wants to say hi to a few people. Hey, Carolyn Till, Carol, Caroline, Kim Harris. Lola Love, Black Queen, Sister and Cece, Joanne Baker, uh, Kat, Teresa McDougal is here, Lady T. All right, very cool. And uh, hey again, Lydia Washington, thank you for the heart. And you might remember this guy right here. So um, in one of those videos I showed not long ago, uh, Harry was spending some time with him. And then Harry turned to leave, and they were like, Prince Harry, Sussex Squad. <laughs> oh, man. I hope Harry never says Sussex Squad on camera because, um, you know, the uh, haters will make too much out of it. So he knows we exist. Uh, Megan knows we exist. And, of course, Doria uh, thanks to Anita of my Duke and I, who made her presence known at the um, um, Women of Vision Awards. Um, she actually, um, I believe that was uh, Anita who said, uh, Sussex Squad loves you, uh, Doria. So there you go. They all know about us. And of course, through our charitable donations, which, as a reminder, there's still a fundraiser going on, but also because of our charity, our philanthropy. They know all about the Sussex Squad. And, of course, so does Woo Woo and a few other people. They know about us, and that's a good thing. We have nothing to be uh, uh, questioned about. Uh, let me see. Yeah, Laverta says, Harry and Megan are some of the most professional people to work with. Uh, everything is so polished and well put together. Can't wait for all their coming events. Very well, <clears throat> excuse me, very well put, Laverta. Thank you for saying that. Okay. I saw that. 20K, 20.1. Yeah, Anita's channel is growing very fast. Good for her. She has definitely put in the work. She has definitely put in the work. Anyone who has full-time work and can uh, keep a channel going, that is very, very impressive. And um, yeah, so Anita works very, very hard. Okay, and let's go on to the next one. And uh, here's one of the earlier images that was shared. Now, this one is from The Hague as well. And um, yeah, I believe this one is from The Hague. I think so. But yeah, so you're going to see more of these amazing uh, images. And this one also came out today with the, um, and that is, of course, Team Ukraine. Team Ukraine. Their story was so compelling at The Hague because some of them uh, actually were given time away from the field of battle, battle that is, to go to Invictus in The Hague. Now, of course, they did not really want to go. They would rather have stayed with their uh, fellow soldiers. But the men and women from um, Ukraine were given special permission because uh, President Zelensky thought it was more important to represent Ukraine and to tell the story. And uh, yeah, there was some very, uh, what was the, uh, the the lady that, that was missing and her daughter competed in her place. You guys remember that? 
Oh my God. It was like a very, very emotional moment when her daughter was competing in her place. So hopefully, and I'm pretty sure it will be covered in the heart of Invis Invictus. So um, look for that part of it. I'm sure it will be there. Now, has <clears throat> uh, 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 Netflix canceled Harry's Invictus Games documentary? Hmm. <laughs> It wouldn't be the same if Mrs. Magoo did not uh, throw her two cents in there. You know, the important thing is, if you don't know what's going on, just make up something. So this troll doll decided uh, some time ago to tweet, uh, you know, because you know how supportive she is. She spent so much time with Harry. She understands Harry. She only wants the best for Harry. So she had to beg the question, has Netflix canceled Harry's Invictus Game documentary? Huh? Well, the answer to that is no, you you vicious little troll, you. Um, you mushroom cap wig wearing uh, old bitty. No, they have not canceled it. The Heart of Invictus is here. Uh, it will uh, premiere on the 30th of August. And it's a good thing because as much as I would have rather have seen it sooner, um, they the people that do the marketing for the uh, Netflix, they know exactly what they're doing. And right now, um, with the summer coming to an end, there has been so much happening this summer. As a matter of fact, I'm going to talk about how some of the entertainment this summer has actually had a huge impact on the economy. Huge, massive impact on the economy. So, um, yeah, there, there has been uh, a lot going on. And let me see here. Oh, my goodness. Okay, bear with me for just one second. <laughs> Okay, I'm just scrolling through just to make sure we don't miss anything. All right. Huh, okay. Oh, my goodness. All right, all right, all right, all right. Sorry, got it. Now, uh, continuing on that, let us go to the next one. Oh, <clears throat> Offshore wind boom gives Charles, uh, King Charles, that is, a 45% pay raise. Uh, Charles III, uh, who has been all these years touting a very slim down monarchy. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. I didn't uh, know that there were so many comments. Let us go back to that for a second. Let us go back. We'll go back to Invictus for a second here. Sorry about that. I missed the mark. I'll leave it right. Oh, I'll leave it there. Okay. So Diane Hawkins says, next time, I hope they add polo. The, um, uh, the men don't, need, uh, don't even need to ride horses. They could just wear those. <laughs> Diane Hawkins, I thought there was some compelling comment. Um, well, compelling for Church Nelly, I'm sure, and maybe a couple of other people. I'm like, oh my goodness, let me go back. <laughs> oh man, you know what? Maybe I'm doing this a little bit too late at night because I think people are a little more relaxed than they would be otherwise. Um <laughs> There, there. Is that better? Is that better? How's that? How's that? Okay. Um. <laughs> Hi, VS Speaks Royally. Thank you so much for being here. I thought there was like some huge compelling comment or something. And I'm like, oh, there must be a few of those. But instead... <laughs> 
We're talking about polo players. They don't even need to ride the horses. They just need to wear the tight pants. Uh, Church Nelly couldn't have said it better herself. Uh, let me see. <laughs> uh, don't give her a second thought. She just gears up and goes for the next one. Oh, you're talking about um, the... Um, uh, 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 what is her name? Uh, Angela Latrine. Uh, uh, Le Le uh Levin. Levin. Uh, let's see. Beretta Batanga. Thank you so much for the super sticker, and thank you for watching Royal Sussex. Okay. Oh yeah, definitely, definitely. They'll hate watch. They'll hate watch, and then have to dream up something to criticize for. Oh, Teresa McDougal, uh, instead of white pants, you'd rather go for the dark horse. Yeah, that was a great photo of um, our, um, let's see, is this it right here? This one, that's the ticket right there. Yeah, that's the ticket right there. Okay, let me see here. Yeah, but polo would be a nice addition, but... You know, polo is kind of like a rich man's game. So I don't know how many people in Invictus would uh, really know the sport, but they could learn how difficult could it be. And that would be a big challenge. Um, but, yeah, that would be so expensive um, to have polo because you'd have to have the horses and everything. But, you know, um there would be people that would be interested in sponsoring something like that to make it happen. <laughs> Can someone, uh, somebody please uh, put a bag into Angela 11. Uh, I'm sorry, put not a bag, a plug into Angela 11. She talks too much and I'm afraid she's going to let the Royal cat out the bag, or should I say the Rose garden? Well, um, I wish she would. I wish she would. I mean, that would really expedite matters, wouldn't it? <laughs> I, well, well, we'll 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 get back to that one later. Okay, so I'm gonna move on. I'm gonna move on with Charles because I don't want to stay on too late. Uh, had a late start today, but I was editing the video. I will share it with you guys. I started working on a video. And I could not stop. And next thing you know, this uh, five-minute video, uh, anyway, you'll see it. it. I love to edit videos. And once I start, I cannot stop editing. I keep thinking of stuff. So I will share it with you later. Let us continue. Okay, offshore win. Booms gives uh, King Charles a 45% pay raise. Public funding increased for UK royals cast doubt on likelihood of paring back the institution. Now, this is from the Financial Times. You know, that uh, paper or magazine that keeps talking about Harry and Meghan as though they got something to do with global finance. Long before Charles III became king, people close to him were trailing the prospect of a slimmed down, modernized British monarchy once he ascended, acceded, that is, to the throne, so it was uh, something of an about uh, turn when the Treasury announced last month that far from cutting the royal cloth to match the times, the monarchy would instead be getting a pay rise of 45%. The increase in public funding from 86 million pounds, which I'm sorry, that number is way too small, way too small. It's much greater than that. According to Graham Smith, it is more like 350 million pounds a year. But let's stay with the 86, shall we? This year and uh, next to 124.8 million in 2025, 2026, and 126 million pounds in 2026 to 27 is driven by one of the more contentious sources of royal income, the crown estate, which controls the monarchy's legacy portfolio of assets, is set to earn more than 
8 billion up to uh, 2031 from a boom in revenue from offshore wind projects. Now, in case you don't know it, <clears throat> everything that happens offshore, um, there, it, it, by law, anything that happens out in that water, that money is supposed to go to the sovereign. It has been that way for what, three, 400 years or something like that. But thanks to the way they have worked out this whole thing with the crown estate, where um, they collect the revenue and then give a portion of it back to the crown or to the sovereign. Um, now a portion of that goes to the, um, to the taxpayers. However, the government's portion is going to increase along with, you know, the um, the gross national product and all that kind of stuff. However, instead of reining in how much money the sovereign is taking in, they're going to get a 45% increase because there's a lot of money to be made with that wind technology. They're going to put windmills out in the waters off of the coast of Britain, and those uh, wind farms are going to generate a lot of revenue, and the Crown Estate is going to get a major portion of it. So uh, this is because in 1964, the estate owns the seabed up to uh, 12 nautical miles from Britain's coast, which I think in international law, I think everybody gets 12 miles off of their coast. The royal household receives a percentage of the estate profits in the annual payment known as the sovereign grant. In January, the king said that the monarchy would do without its share in the renewable energy bonanza for the wider public good. And what was widely seen as a smart move, heading off potential controversy at the start of his reign. Accordingly, trustees of the sovereign grant Prime Minister Rishi Sunak, Chancellor Jeremy Hunt, and Treasurer uh, to the King, Sir Michael Stevens, revised down the percentage of Crown Estate profits accruing to the monarchy from 25 to 12 percent. But even after this, King, Ch uh, I'm sorry, the King's household income uh, will shoot up in cash. Uh, terms because of the overall increase in Crown Estate profits, the Treasury forecast. So while Charles was pretending that he was taking in less money, well, he is for the time being, and that's only because he didn't want to make uh, any problems for his coronation. However, he's going to get that money back and then some. The UK has the most expensive royal family in Europe. And again, I'm going to say it one more time, that 86 million pounds is not ex the exact cost. I'm going to say it's over 300 million, according to Graham Smith. You know, they don't like to add the cost of things like security and, of course, the transportation for security the housing for security when they're traveling and such. Those are expenses that they say for security purposes cannot be disclosed. It is just kind of absorbed into the government funding. So the UK has the most expensive royal family in Europe. If you look there, it's twice as much as their nearest, and that is, of course, the Netherlands, followed by Norway, Sweden, Belgium, Denmark, and the real bargain amongst the whole crew is Spain. Spain is always the least. Now, if you look at the next one, um, you see those light blue bars on the right side? That is that 45% increase. That is that 45% increase. So travel paid by the government is going to go up. That's the green. And the light blue the sovereign grant projection is also going up. I wonder how many people that are working day after day, especially in the NHS and other services, I wonder how much their wages are going up while the sovereign is taking in that extra 45%. Is heresy, I tell you, heresy.
Oh, hey, uh, official Lauren Brown. Lauren Brown is here tonight. Thank you so much for being here. Yeah, Greedy Charles and Camilla are trying to suck as much blood from the taxpayers as possible. Here, here. Let's see. And Lady T says they rake in all this money and yet their charities are failing. They go to food banks with no food or monetary donations and they don't pay for royal functions. What the frappuccino is going on? Yeah, that's a good question. Dash Max says the amount given to royals can never decrease. So as slim down monarchy is pointless because fewer working royals will not impact the amount given. Um, yeah, I don't, you know, I don't know what the whole point of the slim down monarchy is. Um, Charles um, made a big point of, of that proclamation, I suppose. And so far, people are getting older in the royal family. Um, a few of them have died off in the royal family. And also, there's not as many kids coming down the pike. No matter what happens, I just don't think there'll be those big families anymore. Uh, the Queen uh, had four kids. William has three. Uh, Charles had two. Um, you know, and then, of course, there'll be a little bump with the uh, Cambridge kids in all likelihood. Let's say between the three of them, there's six children. Maybe. And of course, let us not forget uh, when it comes to top 10 uh, in the line of secession, you still have the Sussex children. So that, you know, for the time being, you still have the Sussex children. But they're not getting any money from the government. So um, really can't count them anyway because they get nothing from the government. B. Martin says, so that boring family gets paid times uh, two. Wow. <laughs> yeah, they uh, that is true. They, they're they getting a lot of extra money. Uh, thank you for your soup chat. But yeah, they are raking in the dough. They are raking in the dough. So one last chart to look at on this topic. Crown estate profits are projected to more than double over the next two years their profits are going to double over the next two years. Let that set in for a second. Their profits are going to double, and yet there's no extra money for the NHS. There's no extra money for anybody. Um, the government has given control of water management to privately owned companies that dump raw sewage, raw sewage into the waterways of the United Kingdom. And yet the royal family, the sovereign that is, is going to double uh, their projected profits. Okay, I said what I said, I'm gonna move on. Uh, let me see here. Uh, so that money keeps moving to whomever becomes king. Charles better look out for Willie. He might not want to wait to <laughs> inherit the money. They can feed an entire homeless population in that country. And of course, he wants nothing more than to feed homeless people, to house homeless people, um, to sleep rough with black men uh, that are homeless. So, yeah. Uh, as you know, William has once slept rough with a black man on the streets of London, and um, they, they, stayed, they have stayed in touch. So <laughs> Lawrence says maybe they want to stockpile money for the day when people no longer want to pay them. Uh, well, this is, a, yeah, um, and with the primogeniture, as they call it, the whole point is the estate is passed whole and complete to the heir, to the eldest male. And with the uh, royal family, unlike the aristocrats, the uh, titles can actually go to a woman. Um, if the next sovereign is a woman, then that's who the titles will go to. 
Otherwise, for the lords and ladies, all of those titles are passed to the eldest male. If there is no eldest male, then those titles disappear. So there you go. Thank you for your comment. All right. So check this out. I have a sound bite for you guys. Um, this was an interview that took place in Canada. In Canada. And the topic was the Duke and Duchess of Sussex. So let me find that sound bite. This is like so random, but I saw it and I will share it. And, uh, okay, not to panic. I think I know where it is. Nope. Okay. All right. Incoming, incoming. You know what? I didn't save it. <laughs> Everything I did today, and I did not save that. Oh, Lord. Hold on. Wow. And I so had that. Okay. Oh, I do have it. I do have it. Not to worry. There you go. My name is Daniela Atkinson, and I'm out here with Bodog asking people's opinions on Prince Harry and Meghan Markle. What are your thoughts on Prince Harry and Meghan Markle? I love Meghan Markle. I have no thoughts. I'm a big Suits girl, so that's all I know her from. My thoughts on, like, their love story. They're trying to make the best of a tough situation that they're in. I think a biracial couple is so, so nice to see. I can see you're reading the book. What are your thoughts on it? Uh, it was an interesting read. Has it altered your opinion on them at all? Not really. It sort of made it more, more rounded, perhaps. Royal family is... I mean, it's a bit weird. Well, thank you very much. I appreciate it. No worries. My name is Daniela Atkinson, and I'm out here with Bodog asking people's opinions on Prince Harry and Meghan Markle. What are your thoughts on Prince Harry and Meghan Markle? I love Meghan Markle. I have no thoughts. I'm a big Suits girl, so mm. that's all I know her from. My thoughts on, like, their love story. They're trying to make the best of a tough situation that they're in. I think a biracial couple is so, so nice to see. I can see you're reading the book. What are your thoughts on it? Uh, it was an interesting read. Has it altered your opinion on them at all? Not really. It sort of made it more, more rounded, perhaps. Royal family? is i mean it's a bit weird well thank you very much i appreciate it okay so i i played that one for you twice that is from a show called bulldog i guess it's one of those news magazines but it's called bulldog and uh she asked those uh three people about uh the sussexes well the guy just happens to be reading spare um he was so painfully laid back though um, kind of got on my nerves, but thank you for supporting the Sussexes. Um, I think it's kind of hard to tell with him, but the lady on the left uh, with the black uh, tank top, uh, is that, a, no, it's not a tank top. Well, anyway, uh, with the all black on, she was the one who um, said that she watched Suits and the other one there on the right, uh, she was the one who said that it was nice having a biracial couple. I think that's the order of it. But yeah, so they went back and forth with the three of them. Uh, but yeah, that was just something I found today. And thank you to the squatty. I think it was Iris uh, that shared this. Uh, but yeah, thank you so much for that. Okay. Oh, yellow rose tea. <laughs> I hate you punishing yourself like that. I could not stop editing that video. Um, yeah, I, I couldn't help it. Uh, let me see here. And I'm going to share with you guys very soon, I promise. Okay, let's go on to something else. The British Museum sacks member of staff over missing and stolen items. Well, uh, what about the Elgin marbles? What about the... Uh, the uh, the the Benin bronzes. What about the Rosetta Stone? What about all that stuff at the British Museum? Well, the British Museum said Wednesday a member of the staff has been dismissed after items from its collection, um, including gold jewelry and gems, 
had been found to be missing, stolen, or damaged. The museum, one of the most visited in the world, said it was taking legal action against the individual who had also launched a review of security. London's Metropolitan Police is also investigating, the museum said. So they got all of that stolen stuff from the days of empire, and they have the caucasity to make a fuss because someone who works there helped themselves the same way that they helped them. <laughs> uh, let me see. What about the uh, stolen bronzes and gems? Yeah, well, exactly. I think I, you uh, were probably typing before I could even uh, get to it. But yeah, see, see, Lauren Brown, see how we're on the, the same page. I don't know what that is, but we seem to have that connection. Thank you so much for that. Uh, let me see. Oh, uh, if Charles dies first, Camilla will be named Queen Dowager bestowed upon her. According to reports, Camilla is also from Windsor bloodline. She won't be... Uh, the soul queen. Uh, she won't be the soul queen. Uh, that's because, well, there, there would be Kate, right? And, uh, and of course, that's, you know, soul, S-O-L-E. But then, of course, there is a soul queen, you know, a soul, soul queen from round the way. You know what I'm saying? There's the other soul queen. So there's, there's, <laughs> don't forget about this soul queen. Uh, let me see. So the thief uh, became a victim. <laughs> yeah, I guess it's, yeah, you have to decide what you mean by soul. But I guess if you're going to go with that spelling, okay, I got it. I got it. Um, I just wanted to remind you that there's more than one. There's more than one queen, a soul queen. So there you go. Um, nothing like a box of Newports and a and a Afro hair pick. <laughs> Did my Middleton get a job at the British Mint? <laughs> I love it. I love it. I love it. Yes, that's a good question. That is a good question. Are there any Middletons on the payroll at the uh, British Museum? Ah, I like that one. <laughs> Women might have single-handedly saved the U.S. economy from a recession, this summer, and we need to talk about it. Well, according to Alana Valco, uh, from Beyonce's Renaissance tour to Barbie, uh, to the Barbie movie, and Taylor Swift's E-Race tour, women are practically ruling the summer, and now the U.S. economy is thanking them. Three women have led productions along, uh, have all led uh to a billion dollar spending spree across the nation, helping local economies and keeping recession fears at bay. So let's break it, break down all the benefits reaped by uh, Spending Girl Summer. Oh, that's a good name for it, Spending Girl Summer. The Erase Tour is set to break records as the first tour to cross a billion dollars in ticket sales alone, as reported by Fortune. One report even estimates that the tour would generate $4.6 billion across local economies, which takes into account uh, ancillary, uh, ancillary, that is, um, spending, such as accommodations, transport, and food. But let us not forget uh, Queen Bay. Um, and, and also, you guys, look at that. Nail salons, LGBTQ businesses um, saw near triple digit increase with uh, Bay in town. And then Taylor Swift got a shout out from the Federal Reserve. So 
I think the only difference is I don't know if Taylor Swift has gone abroad. See, a lot of the tour dates that Beyonce had was overseas. I mean, she was in Europe for a while. So um, taking that into account, I and again, I don't know if uh, Taylor Swift, if any part of her tour is going to go overseas, but there is an excellent chance that Beyonce might actually um, break whatever record Taylor Swift sets. So I don't know who started first. The only thing that I think um, will make a difference, in my opinion, is the fact that Beyonce did go to Europe for um, a big part of her tour. Is that where she started? I don't remember. So let me see, Beyonce. Yeah, Yellow Rose T says Beyonce is expecting to bring in two to three billion, while uh, Taylor Swift uh, one point two five billion. So yeah, so yeah, that is. Um, anyway, uh, let me see. Which uh, magazine was this from? Uh man, I forgot which magazine it was, but yeah, if you want to find the article. Um, I just don't remember which magazine I got it from. Oh, Lord. I usually make sure I add the name somewhere, and I did not. But, uh, yeah, it's an interesting article. Like, for instance, they said that when Taylor Swift was in Chicago, 96 point something of the hotel rooms were all booked. That was nearly full capacity, over 40,000 rooms in Chicago's hotel industry were all booked up. So these two ladies, plus the Barbie movie, they have, um, and I think, was the Barbie a, a female-led production or, or not? I don't remember. Because I think they're also forgetting the other big box office this summer was the, um, the um, what was the, the Mermaid movie, whatever the name of it is, the Mermaid movie. Although, I don't know if it went over a billion dollars. Um, but I I thought, well, I know it was at least 500. I think that movie did do a billion dollars. Oh, see, Lauren Brown, there we go again. Are you reading my mind? <laughs> okay, it is next in line. All right, so yeah, you got the two movies, right? And then you also have the two concerts. So girl power. Go girl power. Okay, so that is why they're saying uh, Barbie and not uh, The Mermaid. So it's the Barbie movie. And this is in terms of women-led productions. So it's the Barbie movie and the two concerts. So maybe, just maybe, that's why they excluded the uh, Mermaid movie. And plus, didn't the Mermaid movie come out in spring? I think that was a spring event, wasn't it? Still, it was for the summer season. Lynn E says, please pray for my son, Chad Mark, home today from the hospital after four days. Um, hem hemorrhotic fever, a lot better, a bit weak, no fever, no pain or nausea. Oh, my goodness, Lynn E., of course we will. Of course we will. Thanks for telling us. Oh, you must be worried something terrible, but we are here for you, and we will send our Sussex Squad prayers for certain. Wow, I'm going to have to read up on that. I've heard of it before, but I never knew what it was. Today from the hospital. Wow. After four days. Well, thank goodness he's home. And yeah, it's, it's always a good thing. You can heal much better from home than you can at the hospital. So thank goodness for that too. Better to be at home. Well, thank you for sharing that, Lynn. And, and also thank you for the super chat. All right. You all know what to do. Throw them Sussex prayers out there. Yes, thank you, uh, Olivia Johnson. Speedy recovery and healing. Uh, Kim Coates says, sending out uh, prayers and continued healing. 
Thank you very much. Yellow Rose T says, much prayer. And uh, let me see. Oh, thank you, Gwendolyn Daniels. Okay, Adrian Burrow, thank you for joining us tonight. All right. So, um, all right, so that's good, though. It will stave off. Oh, do I have another sound bite? Yes, I do. You guys, oh, you know, sometimes you need somebody that is going to hand them their um, backside. Just hand them their behind because they, um, well, anyway, you will hear. Um, the young lady on the right side was not having it, okay? She was not having it. I'll let you hear for yourself. Her wrist. I mean, it's, it's just completely set up. And well, but my big question is. Now, that first voice that you heard, the one that sounds like a lorry driver, uh, that first voice you heard, that was that Hanna-Barbera. Yeah, that was the Hanna-Barbera of uh, royal experts. You know who I'm talking about, right? Um, Droopy, the dog. Uh, Hanna-Barbera, the, 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 the embodiment of Hanna-Barbera's cartoon series. Um, Ingrid Seaweed, a Seaward, a Seaward, Seaward. That was Ingrid. You know, Ingrid sometimes talked like she got some sense, and then other times... She just really goes along with the party line. She's going to get her 300 pounds. She is going to get her 300 pounds. She has earned her 300 pounds. So anyway, uh, I'll let you listen again to what Droopy just said. Um, Even if she does have this thing on her wrist, why do you all care? Haven't you all been saying for months and months you want them to do their own thing, find their own way of making money, and stay away from the royal family? This is something that's clearly personal to her. It's a okay, let me start again with Droopy, and then that's when the young lady talks. So Droopy, you have to listen careful because her part is not that long. Show off the, li the little circlet on her wrist. I mean, it's, the, it's just completely set up and well but my big question is even if she does have this thing on her wrist why do you all care haven't you all been saying for months and months you want them to do their own thing find their own way of making money and stay away from the royal family this is something that's clearly personal to her it's a health and wellness thing and she has it on her wrist even if hypothetically she was promoting this company she has a Hermes scarf around her neck is she promoting that she has a maximara coat is she promoting that i think it was just an excuse for the media to look at this thing that not everybody knows what it is so they focused on that and now they're trying to pretend as if megan's doing this with some commercial thing she hasn't even officially announced that she's going to relaunch the tag i hope that she does and i hope that when she does she doesn't get picked apart week on week on week by just being out and about running errands and we all know how lucrative a picture of Meghan markle is look at it it's like front page everywhere everybody's talking about it so why is it so hard to understand that paparazzi might actually be there waiting for her because they know that it's a big payday whenever they get a picture of her coming out of the doctors or just going to the farmer's market well that's a good point Carl. Hear, 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 well said. Uh, Shay, thank you so much for joining us. <laughs> oh, uh, <laughs> my goodness, do you think that's a wig? <laughs> really? I'm being sarcastic, of course. Do you think that's a wig? Um. Like I said, that Hanna-Barbera uh, come to life, Ingrid, has a lot of nerves. She has a lot of nerves. And you know what, guys? If they would just leave the Sussexes alone, I wouldn't have anything to say. I wouldn't be paying any attention to these people. But for my own mental health and well-being, I need to... I, I need to find some levity in them in order to be able to deal with it. You know what I'm saying? 
So otherwise, I don't, I don't, I, I don't want to bother with these people. But <laughs> but they asked for it. They 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 asked for my sharp wit, my sarcasm. Um, they they're asking for it. I'm blaming the victim. You know how they say don't blame the victim. I am blaming the victim. Um, just stop. Leave them alone. Leave them alone. I don't want to push back, but I feel compelled to do it because you're messing with my faves. You know, a long time ago, I was satisfied to just watch the Sussex as Sussex. And then next thing I know, there's all these cruel remarks and uh, these questions about their intentions and their their um their 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 um uh, what what do you call it their um their honesty their integrity all of those things have come into question why do they this why do they that and then all the talk about how they relate to their families who uh, from all accounts have been trying to kill them all of these things and yet they just keep finding stuff to say so Ingrid, just in case you miss it, her name's not Droopy the dog. Ingrid, I'm going to be nice and say Ingrid. Drew up uh, Ingrid. She says that Megan had that circulet, as she called it, on her wrist, and obviously this was a setup. What does that do to someone's mental health? that a person who is amplified by hundreds or thousands on television is accusing them of being disingenuous. What does that do to someone's mental health? Day after day after day. So um, most of you all who have been watching Royal Sussex it's, it's given us a chance to, to let it out. And I appreciate you all being here. I get just as much out of it as the next person. All I wanted to do was just watch the Sussexes Sussex. I was there on the wedding day. I saw them go by in the carriage. From the uh, announcement of an engagement up until the wedding day, I took a crash course in all things Megan and Harry. And I just wanted to watch them do great things, but I couldn't. I wasn't allowed to. That I felt like something was taken away from me, if that doesn't sound too selfish. I felt like somebody took something from me. And then you have someone with as much age and experience in communication as Ingrid, who goes on television and just makes up something about a thing she knows nothing about. She doesn't know what Megan's intentions are. And I don't want to just pick on her. That's all of them. This is a payday. And there's some people who believe that this is uh, just people that are called upon to give an opinion, not that they're being paid. There's some people right now that still don't know that Ingrid is being paid to be there. They don't know the difference. But that's a payday. Her accusing Megan of doing something nefarious is a payday. And a chance for the powers that be uh, to use Megan and Harry as part of a cultural war, as part of an alt-right movement. You see, it's not the most serious thing in the world, what Ingrid said. But it's like death by a thousand cuts. It's that drip, drip, drip of negativity. And so with that, I say it once again. Droopy the dog. Next. Um, did you all know that there's a summer look for Nana? I had no idea that Nana had gone blonde. I mean, not completely. But Nana has gone blonde for the summer. I didn't notice it because I never watch her. But <laughs> Nana has gone blonde streaks or highlights or 
No, you know what? It's actually a blonde dip. Maybe she was leaning over a bucket of peroxide, or maybe she had started washing her hair, to put it mildly. She was washing her hair, and she dipped it in a bucket, only to find out that if there was some type of uh, peroxide or bleach or something. But anyway, it's a good summer look for her. It goes with the frost on her eyelids. You know, I was thinking all along, she wears too much of that gold eyeshadow, but I think she has found a way to bring balance. <laughs> she has found a way to bring balance and harmony um, to the universe because she has decided that the only thing that could make sense out of those frosted eyelids is to bleach the 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 wig or the extensions or whatever it is. So there you go. There you go. Um that is Nana's summer look. So summer loving happened so fast. Summer extensions got me a blast. Dip my wig in peroxide. <laughs> Put some gold shadow over my eyes, summer flings. What? <laughs> tell me more, tell me more. Did you use peroxide? Tell me more, tell me more. Did it get on your eyes? Uh huh, uh huh, uh huh, uh huh. <laughs> Oh, man. Didn't Shirley Bassey have a song, Gold Extensions? Oh, well. Um, okay, not my best song. <laughs> not my best song, but um, yeah, it needs some work. Understand, I just kind of come up with those off the top of my head. If I ever taking a pen to paper and really thought out the lyrics if I ever done that. Uh, but yeah, so anyway, you guys, just wanted to share Nana's summer look. Wouldn't want it to be wasted, right? So because I know most of you all will never um, write, oh, you know the song, Good Finger. <laughs> or in Nana's case, Good Shadow. <laughs> oh man well you know the con the convenient thing is that she could actually take her hair off and condition it it can condition while she naps that's the good thing <laughs> uh, well you know what it might look nice if she was wearing like a solid top I think wearing the tiger stripe, it kind of gets lost in the stripes. So maybe that's not a good thing. Maybe she should have wore something solid so that it would actually, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Pop. <laughs> oh, man. Okay. Okay. So uh, somebody uh, took an unauthorized photo of Camilla Tomini, right? Or did somebody take an unauthorized photo, photo of Kate looking like Camilla Tomini? That's right. That is not Camilla Tomini. You know, when you see a head that long, the first thing you think of is Camilla Tomini. So uh, FYI, Camilla Tomini is on the right. Kate is on the left and in the center. I repeat, that is Kate Middleton. If you guys have been wondering, how does Kate look before uh, the Glam Squad? Well, there you go. There you go. Again, because I feel a need to push back, I'm pushing back. I'm pushing back. Um, this was not an authorized photo, but somebody, I repeat, somebody at this event obviously 
is Team um, Squatty. There must have been a Squatty at that event. And um, somehow, well, the truth is it probably was on somebody's social media. And I wouldn't have even noticed it. I'd be like, why is Camilla Tomini there? Don't she have cheering? But it turns out that that was Kate Middlebum. Yep, that is Kate before the Glam Squad. So she always wears her hair thrown, uh, you know, in a certain way. I'm I'm tripping about the hair. It's so flat and 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 flat. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Yellow Rose, she says her name should be No No. <laughs> Oh, not Nana, but no, no. <laughs> Thank you for that. Nona Akua. 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 No, no. And now news from no, no. Yeah. Well, anyway, there you go, you guys. That is Kate Middleton at that um, rave party. Now, they're trying to convince us that Kate left the $700 tip or 700 pound tip. Uh, maybe that was 700 pounds was so that nobody would release this photo. Should have made it eight. But there you go. Um, that's what happens when the glam squad is not around. I'm still not. What is all that white stuff on that table? Can you see that table? What is all that white stuff? Is her uncle there? Do you guys see that tabletop? <laughs> Do you all see that tabletop? Is Uncle Gary there? I'm just asking for a friend. I, I'm looking at that tabletop, and it seems like Uncle Gary was at the party. With treats for everyone. Yeah, Uncle Gary uh, obviously was there with treats for everyone. Yeah, Uncle Gary, that's our Uncle Gary. I'm just asking for a friend. I noticed and now I cannot not see it. What is on that tabletop? Is Kate from the block wearing a uh, door knocker earring? <laughs> okay, it's not Jenny from the block. It's Katie from the block. Yep, that's Kate. My milkshake brings all the boys to the yard. <laughs> or as Kate would say, my milkshake brings all the boys to the yard. But yeah, so that, um, I say Uncle Gary has been there. I do. Well, that must have been a heck of a party. Well, it was a rave party. That's that's telltale signs of Uncle Gary, the one who was floating the um, party pieces all those years. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, she looks a hot mess. She looks a hot mess. So common, right? Look at there. She's wearing those uh, sneakers with the V on the side of it, just like the ones that uh, Megan wore first. Now she has a pair. Oh, thank you so much, Lauren Brown. And thank you for watching Royal Sussex. Oh, and thank you for being a member. I almost missed that. All right. So... Uh, just to clear up things, this is Camilla Tomini. As you can see, uh, four-fifths of her height is uh, below the chin, and one-fifth, if not one-third, of her height is above the chin. But that is Camilla Tomini. So she's actually 6'1". <laughs> Now, I don't know. I don't know how tall she is. But, uh, yeah, that's uh, Camilla Tomini. I still don't know how these found their way to social media. But somebody has 
uh, got their dream pair of, of boots and just wanted to make sure that they took some nice glam shots. Isn't she glamorous? Yeah. Don't, you know, and she really could be Kate because just like Kate, she really don't know what to do with her hands. Kate never knows what to do with her hands. So just like Kate, she really has no idea. But they do look a lot alike, don't they? I never realized that before, but they do look a lot alike. Now you can see why Megan almost uh, fell over backwards when Kate leaned in at her. When Kate leaned at her and she kind of looked like she almost stumbled. Well, now you can see why. I mean, when somebody got that much face coming at you, it is rather jarring, I think. I think it can be rather jarring. So, yeah. But they almost look like twins. They really are starting to look alike. That is weird. Oh, well, when you eat from the king's table or from the queen's table, it tends to do that to you. <laughs> Hi, Helene. Thank you so much for being here with us tonight. So, yeah. Y'all didn't know she was a glamour girl, but she is. That's uh, Camilla Tomini, um, a direct descendant from Easter Island, Camilla Tomini. So uh, Prince William will not attend World Cup final to watch England's Lions face off again in Spain. Prince William will be watching England's first final since 1966 on television and will not fly to Australia to see the Lions uh, compete, uh, Kensington Palace has confirmed. Well, y'all know why he ain't going, don't you? You know why he's not going. Because he don't want to get booed. He is so afraid of being booed again that he decided is better to um, avoid it. He don't want to get booed. <laughs> Losing their voices trying to do them. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, William, uh, taking a hint from his father, is just not going. Kate the Crypt Keeper. <laughs> Yeah, uh, that is definitely a side of Kate we have not seen before. Um, she looks different. And thank you for the super chat. So speaking of Kate, Queen's stinging remark about Kate swanning from the five-star holiday resort to another. Swanning, swanning. Anyway, Kate once uh, told, I'm sorry, not Kate, the Queen once told Kate Middleton to cut down on her holidays before marriage. Instead of jet-setting abroad, the Queen advised Kate to get a proper job. Oh, now see, this keeps coming up. Now, if you guys are under the opinion that this comment is a repeat from, you know, the past, well, this was actually, uh, well, not the comment, but the article. This article was in the Daily Fail today. I still say, and a lot of other squatties have said the same thing. Kate, you better watch it, girl. They're out to get you. Um, why in the world did they decide to run an article like this about the immaculate heart of Kate Middleton? 
You know that's Kate, right? That's not Megan. That's Kate. Yeah. Just asking if you realize that that's Kate. But this was in the tabloid today. Queen's stinging remark about Kate Middleton. Middleton swanning, swaining, whatever it is, from one five-star holiday resort to another. Now, does this mean that the Cambridges are not on vacation together? Black Queen, 14 months membership. Baron, what did Mumble say? Um, the, <laughs> the Miyake breed, though. <laughs> You mean to tell me you could actually translate Kate's words? <laughs> the Miyaki bra the wait the the Miyaki Bri Hada Has Hui <laughs> Oh okay I didn't realize that there was translations for it but thank you so much for that M. Covington says, hello, Sussex family. Keep up the good fight. Much love to you all. Thank you very much, M. Covington. And thank you for watching, Royal Sussex. Yeah, well, I didn't know that there was actually, I would love to see like a uh, closed caption or, or yeah, like a captioning of Kate's comments in Kate's language, not everybody else's. <laughs> Yeah, in Kate's language, not everybody else's. Uh, Yulibi ND, thank you very much for the super sticker, and thank you for watching Royal Sussex. <clears throat> okay, so Ephraim Hardcastle, Harry and Meghan uh, can still use their HRH titles despite their deletion from the Buckingham Palace website. Yeah, we know. We know. Um, as the squad has been saying for the longest, long as they're not using their HRH for the prior, uh, purpose of commerce or trade, they're not using their HRH to title a book. They're not using the HRH to sell uh, that cheap gin that they have on one of those estates. They're not doing that, but that is their titles that were conferred upon them by the queen um, his and her Royal Highness, the Duke and Duchess of Sussex. That's that. Harry is the Prince of the Blood. Harry is always going to be a member of that family. Uh, Megan has married into that family and was his is hers. And by marriage, she is the Duchess of Sussex. She is an HRH. That's it. So, uh, yeah, you could take the HRH away but they're still royals. It doesn't mean anything here. I don't know what HRH is supposed to do while they're in the U.S. Now, as I've said before, there may be something in a language of a treaty that we know nothing about that uh, is in regards to the royal family. Or perhaps it is something to do with um, them being... Uh, any member of the royal family working as a diplomat. But as far as the Sussexes, we just don't know. We don't know um, what agreements come with being a member of the royal family when you're in another country. As far as I know, Harry is the only member of the royal family that have taken up residence in the United States. So this is a first of, a one of, and um, still, there's nothing in our Constitution that would give any exception to somebody with an HRH unless they are working on behalf of another country. So I don't think it means anything. But all right. Well, thank you, Efren Hart Castle. Thanks for reminding us something that we already know, that they are HRHs. They continue to have their titles. And they don't really do anything for them here. Uh, end of story. Now, I told you guys I was making a video, right? 
and you've been waited so patiently for it. So I'm going to queue it up very soon. Melba Wilson has really honored the Prince. I'm, I'm sorry, it was ugh, one more time. Melba Wilson was really honored when Prince Harry ate fried chicken with his hands at her New York City restaurant. Well, Melba Wilson's life changed after Prince Harry and Meghan Markle visited her New York City restaurant. Wilson said Prince Harry ate her signature fried chicken with waffles during his lunch in Melba's. I was really honored that he picked up the chicken with his fingers, she told Insider. So um, that's Melba, in case you didn't know. And inspired by the Sussexes, I made a trip to that restaurant myself. And I have to tell you, I ate and then went back to the hotel and passed out. I had a ticket for the city tour. I ate that chicken and waffles and passed out. I was going to go back to the hotel just to lay down for a minute, right? Hours later, the sun had gone down. My stomach was still up. And I was about as satisfied as I had ever been um, eating food in New York City. So I will tell you right now, you got to go to Melba's. Uh, let me see. Melba Wilson shared what it was like to have Prince Harry and Meghan Markle at her restaurant. Oh, let's see. Uh, is it Michelle Braid, uh, Brathwaite? Brathwaite, thank you so much for the super sticker. And thank you for watching Royal Sussex. So I am going to upload this um, video later, but I decided to premiere it here on Royal Sussex. Uh, let me see here. Oh. We are going to have a premiere. This is what I was working on for hours. I just couldn't stop. I couldn't stop. Melba Wilson's life completely changed when Prince Harry and Meghan Markle went on a date at her Harlem restaurant. And Wilson told insiders she was honored when the Duke of Sussex ate her signature fried chicken with his hands. Wilson recently sat down with Insider to chat about Flavors of the Open, where she'll be feeding 700,000 U.S. Open fans alongside top chefs like Pat LaFrieda and Chopped star Alex Guarnaschelli. And she was happy to spill all the details about the royal's visit to Melba's. As the world slowly reopened in September 2021, Prince Harry and Meghan arrived in New York City for the Global Citizen Live charity concert. It was the couple's first joint public appearance in more than a year, and the first since their interview with Oprah Winfrey that March. So when Harry and Meghan chose Melba's to have a very public lunch, all eyes turned to Wilson's restaurant. I thought someone was playing a joke on me when I found out they were coming, Wilson told Insider. I thought I was being punked. Wilson said the Duke and Duchess of Sussex didn't want the restaurant to be closed to the public during their lunch date. In fact, they spent much of their time talking to the chef in her diners. From the moment I greeted them outside Melba's, the warmth that radiated through both of them was so genuine. Wilson said, seeing the love they share for each other, the kindness, the way they spoke to one another, it was so beautiful. During their visit, Harry and Meghan shared Wilson's spring rolls, country catfish, yams, collard greens, and her signature chicken and eggnog waffles. Prince Harry was like, wow, I love the waffle with his British accent, Wilson recalled and I was really honored that he picked up the chicken with his fingers. He used the proper etiquette. I was like, wow, Harry knows how to eat fried chicken, she added with a laugh. I was really impressed by that. Wilson's chicken and waffles dish features both dark and white chicken meat and is served with strawberry butter and maple syrup. The chef told Insider that one of her secrets is marinating both the meat and flour. When you bite into it, you're going to get the crispy chicken skin on the outside 
and that crust is going to be delicious because the flour has been seasoned, she said. And when you bite into that chicken, it's going to be moist because the chicken has been marinated. Pops of flavor all throughout. That's what a good piece of fried chicken is all about. Wilson said Harry and Megan's visit to Melba's had a major impact on both the business and spirit of Harlem. People wanted to eat where Megan and Harry ate, she added. It was great for the community, but it was also great for people who have dreams. When you start at the bottom, how do you get the Duke and Duchess to come and dine at your restaurant? Those are the things that we read about in storybooks, but they actually do come true. And she had help from none other than Prince Harry and Meghan Markle. There was something that happened here that was very magical, I'd say about a month ago. We were blessed to have the Duke and Duchess of Sussex, Prince Harry and Meghan came in to visit us. Their way to show us that they care was to give and donate $25,000. We took the check and divided it evenly amongst you. You get a check, you get a check, you get a check. Last month, Meghan and Harry unexpectedly dropped into Melba's for a meal during their visit to New York City. When I heard that they were coming to dine at Melba's, I was shocked. It was so sweet. It was just a great experience I would never forget. It's here at Melba's that Harry tried his very first chicken and waffles, the famous chicken and waffles. They loved everything, first and foremost, but the chicken and waffles was absolutely astounding to them. They asked owner Melba Wilson to sit with them and talked about their employees and how COVID has hit the food and beverage industry. Megan said, actually, we're going to leave a gift for you. We're going to leave a gift. And she said, we're going to make a donation of $25,000. Thank you so much. So Melba divided the money equally and gave it to all her employees. It's an amazing thing. This is giving a lot of hope and, and love and just in relief. This team, who makes it a point to give back to the community and helped feed more than 200,000 frontline workers during the pandemic, is savoring this gift from Megan and Harry. Yeah. Thanks for watching Royal Sussex. Thanks for watching Royal Sussex. <laughs> anyway, so that's what I was working on earlier. And um, it was fun making it. And um, if you haven't figured it out, um, that, oh, well, they did mention it in the video, that the, um, the waffles come with a strawberry butter, this creamy butter that is flavored with strawberry. Oh, so good. And you just lather that up on those waffles and you take a bite of chicken and you take a bite of waffle and all those flavors are just moving around across your taste buds. Woo, it's good. Good, good, good. But uh, yeah, so do make sure you go to Melba's next time you're in the Big Apple. Um, you won't be sorry. Uh, let me see. Oh, uh, T-shirt. Uh, Baron, I even got the T-shirt. Now, you know what? Uh, did you say that you had been there before? Let me go back and take a look. I'm sorry. I, I uh, went and got a snack. Uh, okay, you had that. and uh, Okay. But, yeah, well, I asked if I could buy a T-shirt, and they said that they weren't for sale. They had a box of them sitting by the door. And I'm just like, that's such a tease. But yeah, um, they were like beneath the coat rack. But I guess that was for the employees only at the time. But I guess now you can buy one of the T-shirts. So 
I would love to get one. Maybe I'll see if I can order myself one because I did want one. But yeah, Melba's is excellent food. Excellent. And then if that wasn't enough, I was hoping to say hi to Melba, right? I had saw her walk through and then she left. And I asked the girl, I said, is she coming back? She said, uh, let me go and check. And so the girl came back and told me, um, I, yeah, she was my waitress, as a matter of fact. She was a waitress. And she came back and she told me that um, she had to leave. She had to go do an interview somewhere. And I'm like, oh, okay. Um, she didn't know when she would come back. So as a way to say thank you know, thank you for being here and thanks for asking to meet her and everything. She went and got me a slice of coconut cake. Oh my goodness. Was it coconut pineapple cake? Anyway, the cake was so buttery. It was a layer cake and uh, every bite was like a stick of butter. It was so good. Oh, it was so good. I didn't even eat that while I was there. I was, I didn't eat all, I I had took like one big giant tick chicken wing with me and uh because I couldn't eat it. So I took it with me. But yeah, it was so good. The wing was so big. It's like I would have been afraid to meet the chicken where that wing came from because it was huge and it was crunchy and delicious and it was quite flavorful. So um all I can say is it was worth the trip there. Okay. All right, so uh, let me go on to the next thing here. Oh, and, and by the way, this is the event that they were speaking of. Um, a portion of the pros. Oh, what am, I'm at the top here. Flavors of the Open. So these are the celebrity chefs that were mentioned. Chef David Burke, Josh Capon, uh, Alex Garnashelli. Yeah. Kwame uh, Kwachi, uh, let me see here, Musharu Morit, Mor 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 Morimoto, and Pat LaFrida, James Kent, and of course, Melba Wilson. Uh, Melba, Melba is an inspiration. She is, she's an inspiration and a very, very lovely person. Oh, thank you so much, Catherine. Thank you. All right. Uh, sitting here eating flaming hot Cheetos, wishing. <laughs> I'm sorry. Did I say too much? Now, uh, lots of blessings have come to um, a lot of people that encounter the Sussexes. Not to say that Melba wouldn't have had her blessings in the first place. I mean, after all, she managed to get that restaurant up and running. Uh, but it was still a big impact for her when the Sussexes came because I had never heard of it. I had never heard of it. Uh, 2021's most powerful woman in New York event. Well, as you can see, uh, she was actually, um, as they say, on a upward trajectory uh, before the Sussexes got there. She was well known in New York, but once the Sussexes went there, well, like I said, I made a beeline for the restaurant, and um, the rest, of course, is history. So that was just one of those things that um, happened for her. 2021, we were still in the throes of a global pandemic, but it was a good year for Melba, Melba Wilson. And that is the restaurant right there on the quarter. I think it's, what, 114th and something. Is it 114th and what is the other street? I can't remember. But, um, oh, gosh. Was it 114th in Amsterdam? Oh, can't remember. But anyway, good time. Uh, it was so, uh, yeah, it was such an honor to officially welcome Prince Harry and Meghan, the Duke and Duchess of Sussex, to Melba's. I am so grateful for their commitment to donate $25,000 and hope to welcome them back soon. Thank you for dining with us. Match sales. Uh, yeah, so that was on behalf of Melba's Restaurant. Okay. And that was when the Sussexes made that 
famous visit to New York City. Remember, day one, New York tour. I had made a video at the time. Harry and Meghan, global ambassadors. Service is universal. That's the thumbnail from the video that I made, gosh, almost two years ago now. And again, the red outfit. And that's the one that they wore to the World Trade Center on the right. Uh, and then after they left Melville's, they went to a school where Megan and Harry gifted the school a washer and dryer. What an unusual gift. But see, the thing is, Harry and Megan are very careful to ask people, what is it do you need? Well, some of the kids in the community, um, they have trouble having clean clothes for school. And so along with the washer and dryer, there were other gifts. I think they gifted the school some organic food or something like that. But, um, oh, really, Lauren Brown says, uh, that's when I first started seeing your channel, Baron. I had no idea. Thank you so much for telling me that. Oh, very cool. Thank you for saying that. I had no idea. Ah, that's the kind of food that people stalk you for. <laughs> oh, man. I went back to the hotel and collapsed across the bed. I was just going to lay down for a minute, but, oh, I was so pleased and satisfied with myself before I passed out. Uh, oh, Jose Williams, are, are you going to bed? Yeah. Well, let me see. How much do I have left? Yeah, I'm just about done. I got just a uh, matter of fact, what is that? What's next? Oh, yeah, I'm done. I'm done. So worry not. I am done. That was it. You won't miss anything. I promise you. I'm done. But thank you so much for being here. Uh, but yeah, this was the last thing that I wanted to share. Uh, if I haven't like worried you enough with the conversation, I just wanted to leave this last lingering image on your palette, on your mental palette. Let me see. I see greens of collars, sweet potatoes too. I see spring rolls. What would you do? And I think to myself, what a wonderful world. <laughs> This the mashed potatoes look so good on the plate. The macaroni and cheese has already been ate. <laughs> oh man. Oh yeah. Mm -mm. Lord have mercy. I didn't try the spring rolls. I guess I'm gonna have to go back. Everything just looks so good. Oh, well. Um, thank you for joining us today on Royal Sussex. And as always, uh, oh, by the way, Heart of Invictus comes on August the 30th. So if you have Netflix, remember, um, August the 30th. If you don't have Netflix, you're going to have to make a friend or, or you're going to have to get Netflix. So 221 million people can't be wrong. All right. So with that, you guys, love you. Have a good night. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you all for the very kind and generous donations. Thank you for uh, your memberships and your subscriptions. Thank you to the moderators for keeping this a safe space. Thank you to, uh, what was it, Red Hots for substituting for delicious buttermilk, butter fried, whatever it is, fried chicken. Thank you for substituting, if only for one night. <laughs> oh, man. Anyway, I'm going to go. I got to upload that video as promised if you want to see it again or share it with someone. I'd greatly appreciate it. Um, also, I'll be looking for the last word for today. And as always, we end with our queens. Life for the Sussexes started with those two ladies, and they have done some amazing things. So that's, um... oh, yeah. Speaking of which, was Petal on today? I didn't see Petal. And also, you guys, you know, 
um, I, I, every day, every day, I always look to see if Anne of Facts and Two Cents is on because, well, you know, she's traveling and you know how we are about her. So, um, hopefully she'll be on tomorrow, but, uh, let me see here. And also I'm so worried for the Lady Sussex, the Lady Sussex. I haven't seen anything for her in a, in a little bit. And I was thinking about that today. Where is the Lady Sussex? So, you know, we have a, a bunch of people that we love and con have concern about. So just, you know, for the people that are absent, make sure you pray for them. Obviously, life is um, taking them to other places. And hopefully they'll be back soon. As for uh, the Duchess of Success, uh, surely she'll be on tomorrow, I hope. But, um, yeah. Oh, wait. Oh, Petal was on earlier? Okay, now I see. 58 minutes ago. Now, you know what? I checked and checked and checked. This is what happens. I checked and checked and checked. I was like, well, you know, if, um, if Petal was on, maybe I'll go on later. And then I'm like, okay, maybe she won't come on today. Well, I see she's been on. She was on for like 45 minutes. <laughs> So, yeah, if you guys um, are still going to be up and you want to get some more Sussex on, you can always go over to Pedal at Facts and Two Cents. Okay. Did not realize that. All right. Uh, oh, Lady T, I'm sorry. You are hungry? I'm sorry. Well, um, I guess you have to call the airlines. Are you in the tri-state area or, or something? Um. <laughs> oh, pedal was pre-recorded. Okay, okay, that's good to know. All right, uh, let me see here. <clears throat> okay. Um, looking for a last word. Oh, okay. Thank you for telling me, Reba Henderson. Thank you. Yeah, you know, I get worried when I don't hear from her. So thank you for telling me. And, uh, well, that's good to know. I mean, she's a grown adult person. You can't expect her to check in, um, every day, but... <laughs> You know, as I'm older, I feel like a parental energy going on here. So that's all I'm saying. Okay. Uh, well, the last word for today is... Oh, wait. Um, good night, Baron and family. Going to catch up on some beauty sleep. Tomorrow is... Bre Your birthday is tomorrow. Well, happy birthday. Uh, let me see. That'll be another hour for me. And well, in New York, it's already your birthday. So happy birthday. All right. Well, we will see you tomorrow, I hope. Yeah, it's already tomorrow, right? Okay. All right. Uh, okay. So maybe I'll just have to come up with a last word myself. Let me think of something compelling, something interesting, something to unite all of us. Let me see if I can find something. Oh, well, one of the squaddies shared this the other day. Love yourself enough to walk into only the room and situation that show care and love for you. Love yourself enough to walk out of the rooms that harm you in any way. Love yourself enough to hold the people who harm you accountable for their words and action. Love yourself enough to express your wants, your needs, and your desires. Love yourself enough to tell all the truth. Love yourself enough to keep yourself safe. Love yourself enough to say enough is enough when enough has become enough. 
Cleo Wade. All right. So that was from Cleo Wade, whoever that is. But um, love yourself enough. That is the word for today. Love yourself enough. Got it? All right. <laughs> Oh, I was just thinking of something shady, but I keep it to myself. All right. Uh, so that's that, you guys. I am going to cue the Ginger Avenger, and I will see you all tomorrow. Uh, but until tomorrow, you guys, until tomorrow comes, even though we've already had our last word, um, I'll just add one more thing. Um, and, I mean, it's not the most important thing in the world, but... I, we probably said it enough yesterday, right? Um, dream a little dream of me. <laughs> I was thinking about that all day today. Dream a little dream of me. Da, 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 da. <laughs> I wasn't sure my channel would still be working today after singing that song, but um, much to my relief, uh, Royal Sussex is still here. I thought for sure, I'm like, oh Lord, have I gone too far? Are they gonna pull a plug on me? <laughs> Say nighty night and love you. Da 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 Da, da, pastrami sandwich in a London hotel. Dream a little dream of me. <laughs> oh, Lord. Where did that come from? Where did that come from? I, I was looking and I saw something and I just could not pull it back. I could not pull it back. Okay. So <clears throat> if you can't dream a little dream, uh, dream of Nacho Fagaris. All right. Okay. Love you guys. And it's time to cue the Ginger Avenger. Love you, Carlene. Good night. Good night, everybody.